you know, a third grade teacher is assigning you a project of, okay, you are a P Palestinian freedom fighter here in the United States. What are some ways that you can help the Palestinians in Gaza be free? Like they have no choice but to participate if they want to receive a good grade. That was on the news yesterday. That exact situation was happening. It's, it's so bizarre that people don't see where this goes. They don't see the end of it. And it's not to say that the plight of the innocent Palestinians is not a fucking terrible situation to be in. If you're stuck in Gaza oh, under man. the rule of Hamas and then you have Israel just like detained, keeps everybody detained in this one area. It's not good for them either. No, 2.4 million people in the size of, in an area the size of Washington, D.C. Yeah. And I like to use the word stuck because yeah. they are. You know, we have 240 hostages that are in Gaza, like legitimate Israeli, American, Brazilian, um, from almost every sing single nation, there's hostages in Gaza currently from October 7th. But the 2.4 million people, the Palestinians that live in Gaza, they are being held hostage by 30 to 40,000 radical Hamas and about seven other radical organizations that are terrorist organizations. Your word stuck could not be more accurate. There are great, peaceful, wonderful Muslims in Gaza that voted in a terrorist organization when the PLO and Hamas were trying to figure out who is actually going to be the ruling party of the Palestinian people. Hamas won out and now they are the size of a cartel being funded. Seven, seventy million dollars a year from Iran is being pumped into Hamas and all they're doing is taking every little bit of humanitarian aid and converting it into military resources. And those poor people, those poor Palestinians are trapped in between all of this. It's wild. It's such a complex problem that is solvable but like it's heartbreaking when you look at the individual level of the kids that are there and the women that are there and the civilians that are there are literally trapped, as you said, stuck. If you're Israel, how do you fix it? If you're Palestinian, how do you fix it? When it's so evident that Hamas wants one thing, which is the elimination and genocide of all Jews. And are there any Muslim countries that are accepting Palestinian refugees? No, they never have. Um, that seems <laughs> insane because there's all this support for the Palestinians. If you're Islamic, if you're a Muslim and you want to support these Muslims, would you support the idea that your country, this Muslim country, would accept those people and they could be in a place where they could be free. Yeah, 22 Arab nations, over 40 Muslim nations internationally, right? There's one Jew nation and that one Jew nation, Israel, has done more for the Palestinian people than any other nation ever. So it's it's ludicrous and it's insulting to the Palestinian people to start throwing stones at Israel when in fact they're the only group that has been trying to protect in any administrative way, provide food, water, and resources to the people that are there. For over 40 Muslim countries, not one of them is accepting any Palestinian refugees. What is the answer to that? Like why? They're a problem with the radicals that are embedded inside of them. How did you do, how do you differentiate between who is a, pal a peaceful Muslim Palestinian to who is a radical that is working for Hamas. Like, how do you do that? Right. So as I'm getting evacuation requests two weeks ago and we're trying to be good, proper, judicious servants, how do I know that this name of this person is not trying to fill out an evacuation form to be assisted to move from an area that they're currently denied in or their area, is, their area of movement is restricted for any other reasons besides that they need help? It's a really hard moral multiple levels of truth to try to peel back to figure out who some of these people are and what their intentions are. And it's been that way for a really long time. If you go all the way back to like 1987, when Hamas really started moving and fighting with the PLO for control of the Arif, you know, when Yasser, Yasser Arafat was meeting with Clinton and the prime minister of Israel, and they're making negotiations in Oslo and all the way up to, you know, the first intifada to the second intifada to then now suicide attacks, pizzeria is blowing up. How do you determine who is good and who's bad? Do they have a suicide vest? Do they not? Or like, what are their intentions? It's it's wildly hard. You know, Israel is just such a beautiful place where, you know, there's two and a half billion Christians in the world. There's 1.9 billion Muslims in the world. There's almost 20 million Jews in this world. And guess where their one place that they think to be the holies of holies are? That's right, in Israel, right? Like it is, it is the place for the largest religions in the world to all celebrate. You know, I'm thinking about the ground team that I had with me over there. Uh, I can't even say their names because they're amazing people, but the most brilliant from the expeditionary special operations backgrounds, but the most selfless hardworking, they're giants of humans. Like I look at them just in awe of how capable they are and how selfless they are at the same time. Like these are the most lethal humans on the planet. And they could kill you a thousand different ways, but they're putting their lives on the line to try and rescue a pastor that can't book a flight. Uh, you know, like Israel would do anything to have one of these guys go with them and advise them about how to get into this 
shit show that is Gaza into the tunnels that are controlled by Hamas. And what are we going to do with Hezbollah at the northern border? How are we going to stop the Taliban that just got permission to cross through Iraq? What are we going to do with Al Qaeda that just bribed a whole bunch more people to fly them into every single neighboring country? Like, but instead, they're just trying to rescue people. I just look to my left and my right and I see a freaking private that's three o'clock in the morning. He's sitting there with night vision and he's like, that kid just fell in the water. And motherfucker's off. He's off. He's running down into the darkness to jump in the water to try and save a kid. Like if you cannot find inspiration from that, and if you cannot find something that's going to nurture and feed your soul and inspire you to do something good for the people around you. And look at the guys that I had with me in Israel. Like I'm just astounded by these. And you know, you know, a whole bunch of them too, that are just amazing people in the propaganda vein, this pro Hamas. I just, it's, you know, we were texting before we came on here, like how fast things pivot, the rational understanding of a problem and how perverted it is from truth. Don't know how to fight this. This is, mm. a, this is a unique problem. It's very unique and it's very strange. It's very strange to see massive protests on the streets that are yelling out in support of the people that did that on October 7th. And there was a professor recently that said he was elated when that happened. Yeah. And he was just suspended, which is crazy that it's only that. But the fact that there's so people that are so fucking detached from reality and they have have this very strange leftist Marxist philosophy that is so untenable with the reality of the world and yet they're teaching kids this and then they're talking about this openly openly in public forums openly in social media openly in protests it's fucking strange it's, it's so strange that it's people dangerous. don't understand it's so dangerous and for young people that admire those people or that are being taught by those people and don't know any better when that person's in a position of power and influence because they're discussing these things in classrooms or discussing these things on, on social media. It's, I, I just don't understand it. I'm, I'm so confused. I never thought things would deteriorate this rapidly. They want from the, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. That is a call for genocide. They're calling for, so the river, the Jordan River, which is on the east side of all of Israel, the sea, the Mediterranean. In between those two things is where Israel lies, 7.4 million Jews. They want that to not exist. They want no Jews to be there. So every time that you hear from the river to the sea, it is a call for genocide or an expulsion of all Jews out of Israel. And that is the call of Hamas. And guess who's paying for that thing to be seen on Cornell and in Harvard? That's right. The Russia and China. They're being manipulated by a bunch of our enemies as they're trying to destabilize us in a region and here in the United States. And it's a vulnerability of our that we have because of our freedom. Yeah.